Hi everyone, this is Azim News with me, Vanessa. Victims of flood continue rising in Cambodia, which killed 24 people and evacuated tens of thousands. Authority says at least 24 people killed and tens of thousands evacuated from home to safe place in Cambodia because of prolonged by heavy rain and flash flooding. According to official figures, almost 60,000 houses and 240,000 hectares of farmland have been flooded, affecting 245,428 people in 19 provinces and cities, including the capital Phnom Penh, 8,000 families, and 26,608 are evacuated. Local media report Prime Minister Hun Sen visits evacuees at a makeshift center in Phnom Penh, handing out blankets and supplies. More rain in forecast over the weekend across most of the country. Indonesian students and Islamic groups continue protest demanding the government to reject the new employment law. In the second week of protest, protesters used the national flag to demand the government to reject the new law, which has approved on 5th of October that passed as Southeast Asia's largest economy has been hard hit by the coronavirus pandemic. More than thousands of protesters from Islamic organization and students group gather in central Jakarta to voice discontent over a contentious new jobs creation law. The bill will definitely affect me, my job, my relatives, my friends and everything. It doesn't only affect the labor force, like our students here. They joined the protest because they are concerned about their parents' jobs. Meanwhile, a teacher says their part always join in a protest until the government cancelled the new job law. I'll always come to protest until we feel calm when the government cancelled the bill. Moreover, we are still in the pandemic and everything is hard. People can't go out and some people can't even eat. Unemployment is still high. Even my son now still can't find a job. The Omnibus Jobs Creation Bill, passed into law on 5th of October, has seen thousands of people across the world's fourth most populous nation take to the street in protest against legislation that they say undermines labor rights and weakens environmental protections. Various groups such as academics, labor unions and Islamic organizations pledged to lodge a judicial review at the Constitutional Court, citing lack of consultation and transparency in the legislative process, among other complaints. The former Prime Minister of Malaysia adopts about Anwar Ibrahim's government. Former Prime Minister Mahathir Mohamad says he hesitates about the opposition leader Anwar Ibrahim to have the numbers in parliament in order to take premiership and the country will remain in political deadlock. So if AMNO joins uh, uh, Anwar to form the government, uh, Anwar will lose a lot of his supporters and again, they will not have the majority to form the government. So the situation is very uncertain. Uh, you cannot predict what would happen. Either way, there is going to be um, a situation where the, the, there is no uh, government in the country. On 13 of October, the opposition leader Anwar Ibrahim met the king in a bid to prove he has a parliamentary majority to form government. Mahathir with Anwar's backing steers the opposition to a historical win in the 2018 election, ending six decades of rule by AMNO with a campaign against corruption. Meanwhile, Muhyiddin's seven-month-old government has survived with a two-seat majority in the 222-seat parliament. Mahathir says he did not support Anwar or Muhyiddin. Mahathir, whose decision to sack Anwar on his deputy during his first tenure sparked a 20-year feud between them, dismiss his former protégé's latest claim of a parliamentary majority. No one seems to have um, declared that they support him. But this is the kind of thing that Anwar is fond of saying, that he has uh, support. Already three times he has claimed to have the support that he would be the correct prime minister, only to find that he had no support. 
regarding to the comments of the former Malaysian Prime Minister, but the opposition leader Anwar Ibrahim did not immediately respond to a request for comment. In the new normal, Filipino teachers bring classroom to isolate villages via traveling school week show. A group of Filipino teachers finds a creative new way to help children of indigenous communities living in remote mountains of Manila to catch up on their studies under the new norms of pandemic restrictions. Using old bookshelves and wooden boards, the teachers built a makeshift learning center complete with a large monitor and it can fit on top of rickshaw and travel between rugged mountain village roads in the mostly rural province of Pampanga. We teachers initially had a hard time because the only option given by the government is online or blended learning where students are given modules and continue their lessons virtually. However, there is no internet or television in this area. We had to think of an alternative way to bring the lessons to the children. According to school principal Marizen Tolentino, one big challenge is the lack of direct supervision by the teachers and the ability among the indigenous students to comprehend and process lessons delivered to them. Because some of our aitas, no, sir, are, uh, they cannot read so the kinder, the LM, the pre-LM students. And so, how are they going to answer the modules? No? Even their parents, they cannot assist them. So the only solution is, we, this, our, our innovation, uh, which is the kolong kolong, uh, with television, then uh, with instructional videos made by the teachers themselves. Teachers of the nearby Villa Maria Integrated School pre-recorded instructional videos using their mobile phones and play them via a monitor mounted on top of the rickshaw to assist students with their lessons while avoiding face-to-face -face contact with the children. Rickshaws are common in these villages. They are used by many to transport goods in this area. So I thought, why not use all shelves to store learning materials and mount a television to play instructional videos and place everything on top of a rickshaw. As Philippines President Rodrigo Duterte has ordered all schools' classes to be held online across the country until a vaccine becomes readily available. The teacher says that so far the students have responded enthusiastically to the courses and their parents are grateful for the resumption in classes. They start the initiative in early October and visit five villages in the same area, reaching around 500 students from primary to senior high school two to three times a week. China hopes Philippines work together on energy projects in the South China Sea. At news conference, Foreign Minister spokesman Zhao Liziang says China hopes it can work together with the Philippines in jointly developing energy projects in the South China Sea. China and the Philippines have already reached a consensus on the issue of joint development of oil and gas resources in the South China Sea and have established a cooperation mechanism through the relevant consultations. China hopes and believes that both sides can meet each other halfway, promote joint development, and continue to achieve positive progress. Philippines President Rodrigo Duterte has lifted a moratorium on petroleum exploration in the South China Sea, paving the way for three projects to resume, including a possible joint venture with China. Energy Secretary Alfonso Cuzzi, in a virtual media briefing, says that he did not expect the move to effect a memorandum of understanding between the two countries on a possible joint development in the dispute waters as well, as joint venture talks among exploration companies. Singapore and Hong Kong announced plans for travel bubble to decrease the coronavirus disease. Hong Kong's Commerce Secretary Edward Tiao says in a new conference, the two cities announced as they move to reestablish overseas travel links and lift the hurdle of quarantine for visiting foreigners and travelers under the scheme will need to get COVID-19 test results and travel on dedicated flights. And in the process, uh, Singapore and Hong Kong are among the first partners that are able to lock in this uh, mutually agreeable arrangement, whereby uh, fulfilling certain condition, essentially sort of a, uh, a mutually recognized uh, COVID-19 test, uh, 
bubble flight, ensuring no transit passenger uh, coming in, and also sort of uh, uh, imposing uh, uh, these conditions to allow uh, travelers to come or go uh, under this arrangement. So in the meantime, that's why it's important for us to sort of move uh, uh, at the same time uh, various ways to revive normal traveling as much as possible, provided we can put the virus under check. So the condition, the set of condition that uh, has been agreed between Hong Kong and Singapore could be a milestone where uh, we both feel that, well, by fulfilling these conditions, we would be able to put the virus under check through this uh, sort of uh, test and also uh, uh, um, arrangement. Hong Kong, which has banned non-residents since March, setting the deal with Singapore as its first resumption of travel ties with another city. Travelers from mainland China and neighboring Macau still face 14 days in quarantine. The deal with Singapore is its first resumption of travel ties with another city for Hong Kong, which has banned non-residents since March. Singapore already announced packs on essential businesses and official travels from China, Indonesia, Japan, Malaysia, South Korea, and open unilaterally to general visitors from Brunei, New Zealand, Vietnam, and most of Australia. Singapore is quarantined to just seven days for travelers from Hong Kong from 14 days earlier. It has put the city on its list of low-risk places. Hong Kong's daily coronavirus infections dropped mostly into single digits since August, and it has eased some social distancing curbs. Singapore has similarly seen its daily cases fall between 10. Vietnamese rescue teams found 13 military soldiers, but 22 others missing in two deadly landslides. Vietnamese rescuer recovered 13 soldiers from the site of the two deadly landslides three days after the disaster near a remote hydropower dam, and 22 other military members are still missing out. Helicopters and military vehicles with more than 600 soldiers are deployed to hunt for signs of life after two mudslides in central province of Tua Ting Hue, which trapped 17 construction workers and 13 troops sent to rescue them. Meanwhile, the government in a statement on its website says, the bodies of the soldiers are transferred to a hospital in Tua Ting Hue for funerals. At least 22 other military personnel are still missing in Vietnam's central province of Quang Tri. The statement also mentioned that the landslide hit the barracks of a unit of Vietnam's 4th military region after another landslide killed 13 people, mostly soldiers. Deputy Minister of Defense Pang Vang Giang in his statement says, the authorities will mobilize all possible forces and equipment to search for all reminder while maintaining safety for the rescuers and the equipment. In addition, the country's weather agency says rain of as much as 600 mm is likely to continue in parts of central Vietnam. The disaster agency says the intense rainfall since early October has caused floods and mudslides that have killed more than 70 people in central Vietnam, and the recent adverse weather has seen more than 66 and 500 people evacuated from floods and landslides in central Vietnam, where 135,000 and 700 houses and around 10,000 hectares of crops and fish farms have been inundated. The images show that the flood continues to rise in the central of Vietnam, the flooding in the streets and damaging many houses, and prevents the movement of people, but part of the military authorizers and rescuers continue the effort to evacuate people and search those who are missing. Violence scuffles the wrap after Thailand's police fires water cannon on protesters. Thailand police fire stinging liquids from water cannon at thousands of Thailand protesters on the most violent escalation of three months of demonstrations against the government of Prime Minister Prayu Chang Ocha. The police pushes forward with riot shields and batons to try to disperse the protesters who defy a government ban on gatherings. Protesters, shielded under umbrellas, stood firm as water jets hit them with water and blue liquid containing chemicals which made them sting. Youth-led protests grown into the biggest challenge in years to a political establishment dominated by military figures and the royal palace of King Mahavajira Longkong. Police not use major force to suppress peaceful protests that have drawn tens of thousands of people, although more than 14 demonstrators, including several leaders, have arrested. The government banned political gatherings of more than five people. Organizers tell protesters to disperse more than three hours after they gather.
The pet paramedic transports a sick dog to the animal clinic with pet ambulance. Hong Kong pet paramedics driving a fleet of three pet ambulances around the city with a mission to rescue cats and dogs in need of medical care. They also pick the sick animals from their house. Wong helps transport Yan Yan about half a dozen times over two weeks as her symptoms and breathing worse. 最主要，因為我哋相信咧，人同埋寵物嘅醫療權利咧係平等嘅。We pick her up from her home for many times. Her owners tell us that the doctors say she is cancer. 其實個形式同人嘅救護車咧係相類似嘅。The Pet Club Hong Kong Business Development Director says they have to give same treatment for humans and animals. 其實我一路個心態。The main reason is that we believe humans and pets have equal medical rights. Humans have ambulances, so we don't need to worry at all. But when pets, maybe at night or when they have emergency needs, they are really sick, the owners may not know how to handle the situation. Our ambulances have professional medical equipment, like an oxygen box and stretcher. We can also contact the closest animal clinic. The operation is similar to an ambulance for humans. Pets owner says these services can help the animals when they get sick. Since Yan Yan has a problem in her respiratory system, in Vestropec, if there wasn't an oxygen supply, I think it will be very difficult to bring her to a hospital or a clinic. So, using the service can help Yan Yan. Even if there is a traffic jam, or no matter how long the transportation takes, she can keep breathing oxygen, which can help soothe her symptoms. A company called Pet Club Hong Kong began operating the vehicle in March of last year. It used to only operate them overnight, but now is expanding its services to daytime hours. Each vehicle is operated by a certified pet paramedic who has passed the St. John's Pet First Aid and Emergency Care course. Members of the pet club pay a monthly membership fee of 39 Hong Kong dollar, approximately 5 US dollar, which allows them to use the ambulance services for free. Non-members have to pay a heftier fee of a 500 Hong Kong dollar, or approximately 52 US dollar, plus another 500 Hong Kong dollar deposit per trip. The team has seen a range of cases too including routine trips to the vet and accident at home. Thousands of anti-government protests defies protest ban after five days emergency decree. Thousands of protesters getting into Bangkok chanting keep fighting in the latest demonstration in three months of protest calling for reforms to the monarchy. The past and the today protests are different. The people have access to social media. The majority of protesters' demographic are not only the office workers. Like during the anti-government shirt groups, they are all of those who have the right to express their views through various mediums. Throughout, it's not only the office workers who have affected by this government, it's everyone. Other anti-government protests says they can keep fighting without the leader's presence and they can't be influenced by anything. I think we are able to rely on each other even without the leader's presence and we can carry out orderly protests. This shows that we don't have to be influenced by anyone or anything. We are all here on our own. The government order to ban on news and online information can affect national security, also ban political gatherings of more than five people in the face of the growing challenge. The protesters have also grown more vocal in demanding reforms to the monarchy to reduce the powers of King Mahavajira Long Kong. Respond to these concerns, Prime Minister Prayut says he will not quiet and always support a proposal for a special parliament session to discuss the situation, also supports a majority in parliament. And that's all for today. Have a nice weekend and enjoy your weekend with your loved ones and see you again.